Number one, if you didn't sign a parent association, let's make sure you do so before you leave here tonight. What I'm going to do is put it on the back table. On Facebook, Dr. Umar Ifatunde on Facebook. I'm getting a new website done. My new website should probably be done in about two weeks because the current one, I think I'm too big for that now. I'm not able to do some of the things that I want to do. On the new website, I'm going to be doing a free monthly webinar. And I'm going to be able to start live streaming all of my lectures when I go around the country. So no matter where I'm at, you'll be able to watch. You're going to be able to subscribe to a Dr. Umar pay-per-view lecture account where you log in and you can watch any lecture that I'm doing live. Whether I'm in Canada, you can watch it. London, you can watch it. Africa, you can watch it. South America, you can watch it. I have a U.S. Virgin Islands coming back. Saint, Saint, Saint Thomas. You'll be able to watch it. So now you'll be able to follow me around, but also see how I interact with different communities of black people. What I like about the new website, you'll be able to visit other countries without visiting other countries. Okay, so you can see how crazy some of our people are in other places. Okay, uh, what else? We're going to have a weekly blog on the new website. You will also be able to soon download a Dr. Umar Johnson app to your cell phone. I'm going to have an app. All my flyers will come to your phone, pictures, update on haters, everything. We're going to go through the app and you'll know. Progress from the school. There's also going to be a Prince of Pan Africanism comic book coming out this spring. He's a school psychologist by day and saves the black community from white supremacy by night. All right. He didn't quite look like me the first time, so we had to go back to the drawing. He got to look like me. All right? And then we're going to turn that into a cartoon for the young folks. Okay? Now, tomorrow, I will be in Gary, Indiana for the first time, home of Michael Jackson. Anybody here from Gary? Who been to Gary before? Okay. You from Gary? Okay, you have the flyers for your name? Text my phone, and I'm gonna text you the flyers and you can send them to wherever in Gary. Two nights, six to 10 Sunday, tomorrow, six to 10 Monday. Tomorrow we are at a place called Kuma, Africa. Are you familiar? And uh, Monday, we have one of the high schools. And then I go to Memphis, Tennessee. Friday night, I'll be speaking at Lamone Owen College, which is a historically black college. And then I go to Chuckway the Moomins Funeral Saturday. And then I'll be speaking at the Masjid in Memphis Sunday. Go home Monday, fly to South America Tuesday, Republic of Suriname. I'll be down in Suriname from the 11th to the 18th of March, come back from Suriname. Then I fly to Decatur, Illinois, Millican University, Thursday, the 20th of March. Friday, the 21st, I will be at North Carolina A&T Greensboro for the Dope Incorporated Conference. Saturday, the 22nd, Youngstown, Ohio. Sunday, the 23rd, Washington, D.C. with Professor James Smalls. First weekend in April is Canada, Toronto. I want y'all to come to me with Toronto, come to Toronto with me. First weekend of August, we're going to have the first international grassroots conference. And I should have that information on the new website shortly, but of course, Facebook and Twitter. Or you can always text me. For those of you interested in working at the school, make sure you send your resumes to FDMG Resumes. We also need non-instructional people, lunchroom staff, building staff, secretaries, nurses, counselors, okay? Ladies, if you're gonna work at the school, you gotta be natural, all the women gotta be natural. Right. Don't apply, okay? You got time to get natural though, okay? <laughs> did you, uh, did you, with all, with saying all that, did you mention uh, the, dual, uh, the dual citizenship? Dual citizenship. Uh, I'm going to have to post an update on the dual citizenship. Last time I heard the outside rally that we were going to do, they wasn't going to let us do it. Um, but that we still going to have the indoor dual citizenship conference. 
So a buddy of mine in New York, one of my New York representatives, he talked to the brother who was doing a dual citizenship conference. So I got to talk to him. He called me while I was here tonight, find out exactly what's going on with that. Okay. Okay. But I'm hoping many of you decide to go to Ghana with me. I'm taking my first group trip to Africa. July 14th to the 24th, we will be going to Ghana, West Africa, home of Kwame Nkrumah. Okay, Garbiite. We will be there from the 14th to the 24th, 10 days, the first day in Ghana. So when you get off the airplane, there's going to be a re-Africanization ceremony. Okay? We will baptize you back into your African minds. Next day, we want to go to the Cape Castle Slave Dungeon, El Nina Slave Dungeon, pay respects to the ancestors on whose shoulders we stand. Then we want to go to the Atlantic Ocean and have a spiritual ancestral bath so you can wipe and wash all the white supremacy off of you. <laughs> then we're going to go to the W.E.B. Du Bois Center. There's going to be a meeting there. I'll probably be speaking at the University of Ghana or Kwame Nkrumah University. Then we're going to have a Kwame Nkrumah celebration. Then we're going to go up into the mountains of Kamasi. In Kamasi, you're going to witness a traditional Akan spiritual ceremony. The whole thing. They're going to do it up for us. Okay, they want to do the songs, the dancing, call on the ancestors, the Orishas, the Abusums, and they want to sacrifice an animal for us so that we can come back to America and do the work that our ancestors and the Most High God need us to do. Okay, some of y'all scared of that. No. That's why I'm redoing that. Okay, I'm calling this Dr. Umar Cycle Spiritual Reconstruction Tour. I'm going to tear you down and build you back up the African way. There's going to be a workshop in Ghana on dual citizenship. You want to see what Ghana is with dual citizenship. Right now, no African nation has a dual citizenship application. There is no dual citizenship right now that's formal. Ghana passed the law, but they don't have an application yet. So we got to find out what is Ghana doing to get us that dual citizenship. Okay? There's going to be another seminar on buying land in Ghana, land acquisition. Okay? We know Ghana said that you can come back home, Africans who are coming back to repatriate. Sister LaDonna, could you give me a bottle of water to sister? They said for the Africans who are coming back, there's an opportunity for you to get land in Ghana. Well, we want to find out exactly what we can get. I want some land in Ghana. Do you know you can build a house in Africa of the same quality of a house in America, while in America that house might cost you three and a half billion, in Ghana it might cost you 10,000 African dollars. Excuse me, 10,000 US dollars. The equivalent, you do so much more in Africa, y'all. So much more. Okay? So we're going to have dual citizenship, we're going to have land, and then we're going to have a business seminar for those of you who want to do business in Africa, import, export. You might want to do your shade button. You might want to do your wigs and your weaves. We're going to set it up. No. You know I'm not letting that happen. <laughs> Because one of the things I want to do, I want to build a school in Africa too, okay? So we ain't just going for history and culture and spirituality. We're going for that too, but we're also going for economics and politics. And then we're going to have a meeting of the minds. Like I have to, I'm going to do a book release of my book in Ghana. And we're going to have a team pan African meeting of the minds where we're going to communicate with our Ghanaian brothers and sisters on how we can work together better. They're going to hear from y'all, and y'all going to hear from them. We're going to talk about the problems we have, because you know some Africans think they're better than us over here. Y'all do know that? Some of them think they're better than us. Y'all were slaves, but well, you was colonialized. What's the difference? Right? So we want to deal with all of that too. All right? Let me go through a couple of current events. 12 Years a Slave. Golden Globe Best Picture. Critics' Choice Best Picture. Winner of the Guild of America Best Picture. BAFTA Best Picture. Nine Academy Awards. Best picture. Did it win for best picture? No. Did the Oscars take place yet? Not for that. I don't know. I don't watch some of these. I want to see if it wins for best picture. But some of y'all will disagree with me on my perspective on uh, 12 Years of Slave. Come on with me. Some of you believe that we don't need another movie about a slave because we are always getting negative information about us thrown at us. I agree with you. But I also agree that only telling African children about how great they were 5,000 years ago without telling them how they came to be the post-traumatic slavery disorder individuals they are today ain't serving them either. 
I believe in a balanced approach to teaching history. I believe we should teach them the greatness of the pyramids, but we should also teach them what made us what we are now. Okay? You don't solve problems unless you understand how you got to be that way. And for me, 12 years of slave will be, will be used as a teaching video in my school. Why? Because there's scenes from this movie that illustrate well how we came to be the white people lovers we are. There's some scenes in this movie that illustrate well how we came to be the self-hating Africans that we are right now. Yes, it was published by Brad Pitt, produced by Brad Pitt. I'm no fan of Brad Pitt, okay, who cheated on Robin Gibbons when she was with Mike Tyson. But anyway. And it was another white man saved the day movie too, right? Brad Pitt saved the day. I'm getting sick and tired of white men saving the day. <coughs> but because it was a true story, not fiction, it was nonfiction. There's some aspects of this movie that can be used to help educate about post-traumatic slavery. We gotta be real and realistic here. Yes! We were around before enslavement. And yes, a lot of us were not enslaved or descendants of enslaved, but many of us were. My ancestors did come through the Great Mahafa. Okay? And in my school, I got to teach our children about post traumatic slavery disorder, and I'm going to use this movie. Next, if you're not exercising, you need to start exercising. These are all current newspaper articles that I'm giving you now. Out of Los Angeles, Many people may have thought they've done well, they've done what they needed if they met the government's suggestion of 150 minutes a week of moderate activity. Apparently not. People who replace even a half hour of sitting around with 30 minutes of light activity can improve their health. A sedentary lifestyle is associated with a variety of poor health outcomes, including increased incidence for diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and mortality. We gotta exercise, y'all. If you drive a lot like me, you've got to choose a day of the week where you don't drive at all. You won't get on public transportation. If you can walk, walk. Take the steps instead of the elevator. You have to get more active. The reason many of us are coming down with these diseases is because life now is too comfortable. You don't have to walk anymore. You don't have to jog. You don't have to run. That's where the disease is coming from. And the white man wants you to get sick because that's how he gets paid. Okay? American medicine is based on what? Cut and stitch and drug. That's all they do. They don't, re they don't reverse no disease, you notice that? White men don't reverse nothing. He cuts, he stitches, he draws. That's it. And that's called practicing medicine. So we gotta get active, we gotta make sure our kids are active. Too much time spent on video games and laptops is killing us. You gotta get up and act. Get an exercise bike in your house. Get the uh, stair master. The bun buster, whatever you need. But get your exercise on. Okay? Don't underestimate the impact of sit ups and push ups. Don't underestimate the act of sit ups and push ups. Very important to keep the body healthy. Jumping jacks, very important to keep the body healthy. Let's talk about white privilege. Everybody remember the Dark Knight Killer? Aurora, Colorado, you remember that? Yeah. White man went into the Dark Knight movie and killed all those people. Well, guess what? He still hasn't been convicted. Mm. Listen to this. A new psychiatric examination is ordered for the theory of gunmen. A judge on Wednesday ordered a new psychiatric examination for James Holmes, who killed 12 people inside an Aurora, Colorado theater, July 2012. Saying that an earlier evaluation by a state doctor was incomplete and inadequate. The ruling by Judge Carlos Samora orders the state mental hospital to have a new mental health expert examine Mr. Holmes and offer an opinion on whether he was sane. Offer an opinion on whether he was sane. They're trying to give him off on the insanity plea. This man killed 12 people in a theater, and they're trying to let him walk. They said the last evaluation wasn't complete, so we need a more complete one because we think he might have been insane when he dressed up like Batman or whatever he dressed up like and walked in there and killed 12 people. If he was black, would he be getting another psychiatric exam? <laughs> Listen to this. His lawyers have admitted that he was the gunman, but they argue he was in the throes of a psychotic episode and is not guilty by reason of insanity. 
The exam is scheduled for July 11th. White privilege. Jails off of black people, not the white folks. I saw what happened with, uh, what was the man's name? Michael Dunn? How in the hell can you get convicted of attempted murder when you killed somebody? How can you be convicted of attempted when there was a life taken? And then he says what? He feared for his life. He thought he saw a gun. His girlfriend said he never told me he thought he saw a gun. But this one gets me. When the kids took off, he got down on one knee and kept shooting into the SUV as they are driving off. How in the hell are you standing your ground when you're pursuing the damn truck that's trying to get away from your crazy ass? Can I ask you a question? How is it that the United States of America can find all the black men it needs for the Olympics? All the black men it needs for war in the military. All the black men it needs for the NFL and the NBA. They couldn't find a single black man to sit on the trial of the Michael Dunn case. There was only two black women in the jury. Everyone else was whites and Hispanics. Trayvon Martin, not a single black man on the jury for a trial about a black boy who lost his life. Isn't it amazing how black men are being discriminated against? When it comes to serving on juries where the life of a black child is at stake? Look at that, y'all. What did I tell y'all after Trayvon died? I said, you're going to see more of these killings. Because okay. the government just told white people you can kill black people now without a reason. Yeah. All you have to do is say you felt threatened. He told them to turn their music off. That wasn't bothering you. But now everybody can claim that I was scared of black people. This is why I keep telling y'all, stop giving your guns back. If them kids had a damn gun in that truck, that boy might still be alive. Because they would have blasted back. If you ain't got your license to carry, you get it. We ain't going looking for trouble, but you need to be able to take care of yourself. I have a license to carry, but it just ran out, so I got to renew it. You need to get one, too. What is the criteria okay? for that? What is the criteria that's based on the state? Yeah. Well, number one, you can't have a felony. Okay? Got to have an address, registered voter. Okay. They normally need like three or four small pictures of you. Yep. They make this little test. Sometimes they make you take a little TV test, but it ain't much, though. No, it's, yeah, it's a little test. It costs about $150. Then charge another $120 to take work. It costs $150 for the license? To take the class. Yeah. Is the class mandatory? The class is mandatory. Oh, so you got to take a, a class in order to get a license to carry? Yeah, but it's absolutely not. Okay, okay. And PA, you ain't got to do that. You just fill out. Right. And then you say that to take the class, you got to pay another $100? $125 for the processing fees. fees so all together, you're looking at? $300. Dang. $300. It's worth it, though. Put it on layaway. It's worth it. Okay? If you can't get a gun, get a knife. <laughs> can't get a knife, get a slingshot. <laughs> okay. Next up, child pornography is on the rise in the black community. We got some freaky deekies in the hood, taking pictures of people's kids, yep. Some of y'all got kids in your house, y'all hope y'all got the controls on the internet and controls on the cable box, since you can get on the internet through the cable box now. A lot of y'all kids are dealing with older men and older women and they use them for sex objects. Check it out. Secret sites fuel alarming increase in child pornography. Last year there was a record of arrest, sex exploitation, 7,386 people last year alone. How many days in a year? 365. Divide 7,346 into 365. How many people are they arrested? A day. A day. Child pornography. Guess what? Some of these people you work with, some of these people in your family, you better wake up. Among the worst, infants. Infant babies are used as toys for videographers and sexual gratification. Did y'all hear that? Infants! It is an ever-expanding part of the internet. Chief of the Justice Department, Child Investigation Sex Crime says, purveyors of the material gain status based on their continued and escalating activities. 
Last year, more suspects were arrested for child exploitation, 7,386. More last year than any of the past five years. Watch your kids, and watch what they watch. Be careful who you leave your kids with. Most of our kids are being molested by who? People they know. Because you don't know how to choose the right babysitter. Better yet, everybody got a smartphone, right? You can put a camera in your house and be watching the babysitter watching your kid on your damn phone. So let's get smart with this. Some of y'all got house alarms. You go through your house alarm system, they give you an app for your cell phone. You can watch what's going on in your house the whole time you're at the supermarket. We got to get smart. Okay? I told y'all before that they've been stealing black people off the street using your body to take your organs out for rich white folks. Well, guess what? We got a sister missing out of Chicago. This was in the USA Today. Nia Smith, black female, black hair, brown eyes, 15 years old. She's been missing since June 24th of 2013 from Chicago. I hope they find our little sister, but guess what? A lot of blacks who are turning up missing are not being turned up murdered. They're not being heard from again. And when they do hear from them again, they organs are missing out their body. Dick Gregory said Trayvon had had his organs missing when they finally got Trayvon. A lot of people think Trayvon was an organ kill, a planned organ kill, because he had parts that matched somebody else. I'm going to give you all another case. Did y'all hear how about the brother who was murdered in the South? What was the state where he was rolled up in a carpet? Yeah. Atlanta? It was Texas. Tennessee. It was Texas. It was Texas. Royal Oak. But anyway, it was one of the southern, one of the southern states. And, and they skinned him. They cut his eyelids off and rolled him up in a carpet. And guess what they called the death? Suicide. Yes, they did. How the hell can you kill yourself? Roll yourself up in a carpet. Slit your eyes off and skin yourself. And his organs was missing. He was skinned. Yeah, they took his organs out. This is why I keep telling y'all to stop doing what? Stop being an organ donor on your damn driver's license. You are asking to be killed. You an organ donor? And a white man just so happened to need your kidney? Guess what's going to happen? You're going to be coming out the Royal Oak gas station. And you're going to get hit by a back truck. And it's going to look like a drunk driver. But that was an organized kill for your organ because you're on a damn donor list. If you want to give your organs away, put it in your will. And we all need a will. Will ain't about money. Will is about making sure your records go to the right place. I don't care if you got a penny to your name. You need a will to make sure your paperwork goes in the right people's hands. Okay? I'm going to come to you in a second, good brother. The other thing I was going to say, put in your will that your organs can go to any blood relative who may need them at the time of my death or any close friend, but you got to name your friends, because your friend needs to get on that damn list too. Stay giving you back your whole life, that it needs your heart, uh-uh. Okay? Very important. Good brother. Yes. They're still an organ going to autopsy. Now, if they don't get the organ at the time of death, if they don't get the organ at the autopsy, guess what the last stop is? The funeral home. This is what they do. They go to the funeral home in the hood, Elder Barry is the undertaker or whatever. They go to Elder Barry say, Elder Barry, look, he gone. And you ain't doing too good. You got a hole in the wall for a funeral home. Guess what? You pass off that heart, I got a hundred K for you. Elder Barry said, guess what? Somebody else already made me an offer for 200. So if you want the heart, you better give me 300. You better hurry up because the funeral is Saturday. How many of us, we don't even have the technology to dig the body back up and see if the organs is missing? Look at all the young black men that are being killed in America. He's young, 24, all of his organs are healthy. You think they let them go in there, right? Black man is the father of civilization. His organs can adapt to anybody. Chinese, Arab, East Indian. All these black men being killed in Detroit, a lot of them being killed by cops. Organ killings. Organ killings. Y'all remember the Atlanta child murders? What did they find? A dumpster full of uh, infant, infant children. Murdered fetuses, 500 of them in a the dumpster around the corner from the Center for Disease Control. Listen, the mice that they use for research, the research mice, they not good enough because we humans are not mice. 
So they've been using the white mice, they've been using the black mice, but now they find that the mice ain't good enough for us to really test these drugs, test these new products, test these new diseases. Give them to the seniors in the hospital. You gotta find adults. Only problem with the senior is most of the diseases they put out, they're not giving them to the older folks, they give them to the young. The plan is to kill the young. Mm -hmm. So they need young subjects. Okay? Young subjects. That's why you gotta watch the paperwork you fill out in this doctor's office, because a lot of y'all filling out paperwork saying I voluntarily submit to be a part of some study. Because the doctor says sign, sign here, and you ain't read none of it. You volunteer for your blood to be used for some type of subject that they work on a new test. You gotta read the papers, brothers and sisters. Make the doctor wait, excuse me, I don't sign nothing without reading the whole thing. Right. You think if a black person gave a white person a paper to sign, they gonna sign it without reading? Right. You read everything. Snatching our kids off the street. Now, this one's gonna blow your mind right here. Two gay white males with their child. Has anyone ever heard of something called, let me get the word right, I gotta get this one right because I never heard of this shit. With <laughs> my other paper. Here we go. Has anyone ever heard of anything called? I wanna get this new. This is some new stuff that the homosexual movement came up with. Gestational surrogacy. Gestational surrogacy. Let me tell you what this is. This is when two gay people want to have a baby, but they can't. Listen. Where is that? A woman is paid to go through the pregnancy and birth of a child who is not genetically related to her and then promises to give that child away. To anyone who has had a baby or known someone with the, with, who has, the couple's tireless success for reciting the daughter's birthday story, yeah, 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 wait, I'm trying to get back to this. Surrogate baby making has long been a path taken by the influent and celebrities because it takes good legal advice and money to accomplish. Not a lot of people can afford it. Celebrities who have used surrogates have gone a long way towards normalizing the process. Surrogate births are a small but growing part. I wanted to get ready to talk about how they do this. Okay, let me, let me tell you how this goes. The two gay men want to have a baby, but they can't. So they find a woman to donate an egg. Right? They take the egg off the woman and they put it in another woman to carry for the nine months. The reason the woman who gave the egg isn't going to carry the baby is because they're afraid that once it's time to have the baby, if it's her egg, she ain't going to want to give her baby away. Y'all remember that famous case, the baby M case, where the woman carried the baby and they want to give So what they do is they take an egg from another woman, so it's not your egg, you can't keep it. And they take the egg out of one woman, put it in another woman, she carries. So this way you gotta give this our baby when the baby born because it wasn't your egg. All you did was carry. The egg is fertilized by both of the gay men's sperm. So what they do is they take sperm from both gay men and they put that in the woman. Only one of the sperm can fertilize the egg. Right. But the idea is neither man knows which sperm fertilized the egg. Did y'all see that? They elect not to know which one of our sperm fertilized the egg. Why? because we want this baby to be both of ours. And so then the woman carries the baby, the baby is born, she passes it over to the father. They even said that some gay men can feel the contractions of the surrogate mother. So that's what I Okay? I never heard of this that I read. This is in the New York Times. Front page article, New York Times. Has anybody in your life ever heard of somebody? Can I buy an egg from you? And can you carry it for me? What kind of shit is that? And then I'm going to put my sperm in you. Me and my boyfriend are going to put our sperm in you. And one of them is going to hit. But we don't want to know 
whose sperm hits you because we want to go for like the baby hours, even though only one of us is a daddy. The child never know the mother who gave the aid. The child don't even know the mother who carried him. Ain't that crazy? What, what, is, what, what goes on in the mind of a child? How did I get here because two of y'all can't have a baby? Well, we paid one woman to give us the aid, and we paid another woman to carry the aid, and we don't even know one of their names. LBGT, civil rights. Mm-hmm. Now, some of y'all sisters scratch your head like, damn, how much did they pay you that <laughs> yeah, well, fifteen thousand and up. The article said that some women get paid anywhere from one hundred, one hundred fifty thousand. It can rank into the millions for a woman to carry that thing. Any sisters in here? With any sisters? That's a million dollars. <laughs> All you gotta do is carry that thing. I have a million dollars. Okay, get the right. About fifteen thousand. That's another thing. Any black woman want to donate your aid? Because you know you get up. I got a whole bunch of aids. You donate the aid, you sell it. Fifteen thousand dollars. Any sisters want to sell the aids? Fifteen grand. Two aids and sixty. That's a new. That's a new uh, car. Yeah. <laughs> Any sisters want to sell the aids? Oh, check this out. Now when you go shopping in the store, they can actually track you by your cell phone in the store now. They got a new application, New York Times, where when you walk into a store, they use your GPS technology to track you. Now Walmart and the local corner store know how many times you come there. They know what you buy while you're in there. They know what roads you go to. They know what you pick up. And they claim that when you walk out the store, they stop tracking you. Through the GPS. It automatically, you know how you get on Wi-Fi if you already went? The store go right into your GPS without you knowing and they can automatically track you through your phone. They don't need your permission. It is not voluntary. And they said this is better for them to keep statistics on who buys what and who shops where. So let me ask you a question. If the store can track you, imagine what the police can do by this time. Well, they do it already. Imagine what the FBI, when they stop people on the street, if you notice, most of the time, when the cops pull somebody over, they didn't have their license. Right. How did they know that the person driving that damn car didn't have a license? Because they got all types of tracking devices in the car. For example, when I get stopped in Philadelphia, I rarely get a ticket. I never get a ticket. Why don't give me a ticket? Because when they put my information, I probably pop up. It's like a major or whatever. Leave them alone. They always let me go. I get stopped outside of Philly, I make get a damn ticket. I don't get no tickets in Philadelphia because I'm on that list. You see? So what is the thing to do? When we start organizing for real, y'all, I'm going to be honest with you. I end up coming to Detroit. We get organized. We start making some things happen with the schools economically. Y'all going to have to put your cell phones in a bag when you walk into me. You get them when you're done. We got to get that serious. You might not be an agent, but the agency might be using your phone to listen to the media. Y'all heard that? You got to get that serious. All the phones got to go. You got to search for your phone. Before we look for guns, now we're looking for phones. Okay? The only way your phone can be deactivated is if you take the battery out. Y'all do know that. The new phones, the batteries don't come out. And then I heard they can still turn on remote control from solar power. Yep, probably can. They got your whole life on a DVD. I'm ready to go back to the old way. And a tip, and a tip, and a tip. Put a tip in. Okay. And a tip. FEMA. Hold tight. Well, my black people got Indian in your family. I'm going to talk to you. Okay, my Indian blacks. Okay, listen up. Sherry keep talking about Okay, listen to this. Listen to this. The FBI says that a black civil rights activist was killed during the 1970 occupation of Wounded Knee. Y'all remember that? Yeah. The FBI went up to South Dakota, right. the American Indian Movement. Well, guess right. what? There was a black man who worked with Martin Luther King Jr. who wanted to support the American Indian resistance against the FBI. So what did he do? He backpacked his way to South Dakota. I want to stand in solidarity 
were my Native American brothers. Guess what they did? They thought he was an agent for the FBI, murdered him, mm. and hid it from public view. They just now found out that the Indians killed him. Indian? The Indian Revolution, the Native American Revolution, has killed the brother who came to help him because they said they thought he was an agent. My question is, rest in peace to the brother, what the hell are you doing there? That ain't your fight. We got our own fights. Why y'all want to keep fighting everybody else? Like, how you doing on there? You don't know the people. <laughs> Check it out. His wife says she waited for more than 40 years to find out what happened to her husband. An Alabama civil rights activist who disappeared, and now she thinks she has at least found the beginning of the answer. FBI documents released to her lawyer after years of effort show that the agency believed her husband, Ray Robinson, was shot by Native American activists during the 71-day siege at Wounded Knee, South Dakota, in 1973. It is unclear why he was shot. His widow says that she had heard several stories over the years. One story was that the activist with the American Indian Movement became convinced that he was an agent and informant and executed him. Another story said he was summoned to meet with one of the movement's leaders and when he said he would come after he finished his oatmeal, an argument ensued and they shot him in the knee. Danny? Ray Roberts. So there y'all go. For all y'all who want to fight, everybody, you want to go fight the Arab fight? Go ahead. You want to fight the East Indian fight? Go ahead. They'll shoot you in the back and call you an agent. Fight your fight. We ain't got room for nobody else. I don't know why y'all keep on doing that. Trying to fight everybody, fight the yours, and now you engage the civil rights movement to everybody. We ain't even got no civil rights movement no more. Check it out. More armed passengers travel through Atlanta airport than any other airport. Last year, 111 guns was discovered at Atlanta International. White folks packing guns in their luggage. Let them find you with a gun in your luggage. You're putting locked up. Guess who's number two on the list? Detroit. They found 96 guns on y'all going to the airport. Houston, 68 guns. Phoenix, 66 guns. Never 51. They got me the white folks and they said, you forgot I had my gun on me. It's force a habit for me. You get on the, you get on the airplane with Not your gun? Not the airplane, but I go, I try to get into the bank with it and everything. It's just a force a habit for me to have it. <laughs> I do forget that I, if I'm going into the bank. And so I what do, do they do when you go into the bank? Well, you know it's two doors. Once you get in the they first one. Can't you can't one. get in the next one. You can be arrested for that, though. Can't you go into a bank with a gun? Yeah, you can, but I haven't been. <laughs> I mean, they don't know that it's a gun that I have. I could have a knife or um, uh, something that's other than a pistol. No. Good news. If your kids are looking for an after school job, tell them to go get a job with the GAP. The GAP outlet in the clothing store, they raise their minimum wage to $10 an hour. So tell you. So y'all need a job? Go to the gap. All right, they ten dollars an hour. President Obama wants to raise the whole minimum wage to ten dollars and ten cent by the time he leaves office. And I don't know what the hell they're going to do for us, because after you take the taxes out, you still back to what seven dollars an hour. Five. And all the white man going to do is do what? Inflate, you, inflate the prices on everything. So now you make it ten dollars, but now everything costs four dollars more. Take me right. So you still at where you was. <laughs> Oh, I got something for y'all. Who need who need a job? Nobody. Raise your hand if you need a job. Real rap. Anybody else? Who can use some extra money right now? Not me. Who can use three thousand extra dollars right now? Yeah. Okay. Put your hands up. I got something for all y'all. Y'all ready? No. Straight out of the USA today. Y'all ready? Oh, yeah. I'm gonna tell you how you get. <laughs> I'm going to tell you how you can get $3,000 tomorrow. Listen up. Straight up. You know, I like to help y'all find jobs. I found them. Listen. Apparently, if you're lucky enough, you can get the flu and get paid $3,000 for it. Wait, listen. 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 But wait. Don't try running around naked in the cold. There's a catch. We have to be part of a government study 
by the National Institute of Health. The government is running a study that deliberately infects people with the flu virus. The reason for this is because scientists need to study how the human immune system fights the flu, starting from initial exposure to the full development of the virus. The hope is to create a better flu vaccination. Listen up. Listen up. I'm trying to help you get paid. Listen! Listen. According to Dr. Matthew Manoli of the National Institute of Health, the plan is to have 100 test subjects enrolled by the end of 2014. The compensation amount for participating in the study is $3,000 before taxes. Hold on. And before child support. Hold on. Hold on, I'm not done. In order to lower the amount of risk to the test subject, only people who are under 50 years old and in good health are allowed to participate. Participants, listen up, you will be kept quarantined in a hospital for nine days or until you're no longer contagious. Even though the dosage administered is to induce mild to moderate symptoms, the flu can kill you. The health of the test subject will be constantly monitored to provide an increased level of treatment. During the experiment, it will be observed how long a person is sick with the flu and how contagious they are with the flu and the body immune system response. The experiments are being held at the National Institute of Health in Bethesda, Maryland. Oh, no. Now you only have to be quarantined in a hospital for nine days. And you get $3,000 for nine days. Okay. Tuskegee 626. Okay. You said Tuskegee. <laughs> wait, wait, let me hit y'all with something real quick. Hold, oh, oh. hold. Bethesda, Maryland is the National Institute of Health, right? Guess where the United States Army Bioweapons Lab is? Fort Detrick, Maryland. They're not testing for no damn flu. They're looking for black people under 50 so they can test the latest biological weapon, the latest flu strain, the latest Ebola. This ain't for no damn flu. People been getting the flu for how long they know about the flu. This ain't nothing but another to ski. But guess what? How many poor black people are hurting for some money? Want to sign up? <laughs> Anybody here with the website? Sign up, three grand, nine days. Don't lie. Don't lie to people looking at you. Nine days, y'all. It's only nine days. Three thousand. Somebody can buy three thousand into nine days. How much money is that a day? Y'all want to be greedy for some money? I'm going to help you! And after you come out that study, you know what they're going to say? Something went wrong. We're sorry. We absolutely gave you the wrong strain. You won't be able to have a baby. You won't be able to get pregnant. You won't be able to get a woman pregnant. In fact, we're going to have to keep you quarantined for the rest of your life. You don't trust them people. No damn study. Haven't we been studying enough? Talk to me, quick. One eight hundred flu virus. <laughs> if I catch one of y'all, put y'all kids in one of those studies, I'm gonna kick you butt. Oh, you know we got a sister, right? She's in a bobsledding. Her sister that won a medal in bobsledding. I don't do ice and cold, but Asia Evans won the bronze medal yeah, yeah. for bobsledding. So y'all see me getting into the ice now. Before you know it, we're going to have a Michael Jordan hockey. <laughs> cheating on that. Oh, check this out. Oh. White juror from the Michael Dunn case was crying. She said he should have went to jail. 
A juror in the Florida trial of a man who fatally shot a teenager in a dispute over loud music said in an interview broadcast Tuesday that three jurors believed the gunman had acted in self-defense, which negated any chance of a first-degree murder. Three jurors said he acted in self-defense. Can somebody explain that to me? How you acting in self-defense? None of the kids got out of the damn car. None of them. He was threatened by loud music. The jury found Michael Dunn, 47 years old, guilty of three counts of second degree attempted. Second degree attempted. But he killed somebody, but he got convicted of attempted murder. But the jury has been criticized for failing to reach a verdict on a first degree murder trial on the death of Jordan Davis, one of the four teenagers in the vehicle. Michael Dunn, a software developer, was also convicted of one count of shooting into a vehicle after becoming involved in a dispute with a teenager over the volume of rap music being played out of their red Dodge Durango, which was parked next to his car outside of the Jacksonville service station. Juror number four, a white woman, who asked that her name not be used to protect her identity, told ABC News on Nightline that two jurors had believed from the beginning that Michael Dunn was justified in killing the kids. Did y'all hear that? From the beginning of the case, they said he's innocent. White supremacy. The juror who identified herself as Valerie said the jury had been instructed to determine whether they thought Michael Dunn, listen to this, y'all, this is the instructions. Quote, did he believe that he had an imminent threat to himself or his fiance? Did he believe? No proof? Did he believe? Because y'all know stand y'all ground is based on what? Belief. You ain't got to prove that the black person was going to hurt you. You just had to believe it. That shit works with Michael. Though the shooting had a radical element from the start, Mr. Dunn White, Mr. Davis Black, the juror said race was not discussed in the jury room. This had nothing to do with color. Yeah. Now check it out. Who made up the jury? Four white men, four white women, one Hispanic man, two black women, and an Asian woman. They couldn't find one black man. Tamara Rice, an associate professor of law at the University of Miami, said it was difficult to believe that the jury might have to come to the same conclusion on the murder count had Mr. Davis and his friends been white. Hear that? Mm. If the kid who was murdered was white, he wouldn't have got off like that. Mr. Dunn said on the trial that the, that the boy pointed a shotgun. Police found no firearm. Teenagers who had been with Mr. Davis said that there had been no weapon inside their vehicle. The only shots fired were 10 rounds. He shot 10 bullets. You hit the kid once, you shot again. You hit the kid twice, you shot again. He was shooting the kill because he knew he would get off. If Zimmerman walked, so will I. Now, some of y'all celebrate because he got convicted. You don't celebrate the conviction, you celebrate the sentence. How much time is he going to get? Will he be able to get off a good behavior? That man might be home in one year. White supremacy. Here goes some good news. A group of black athletes in Illinois are trying to sue the NCAA to make them pay them a paycheck for being a Division I athlete because they get sick and tired of being pimped on the field. Listen to this. Major colleges run a football team just like the NFL. Relying on players to generate millions of dollars in revenue. Northwestern football players are trying to form the first union in the history of college athletics. The difference would be the NFL pays their players. Southern Utah University sports economist David Berry told the National Labor Board on the second day of the hearing in Chicago that could stretch out into Friday. That colleges don't pay their football players likely boosts their program's profitability. The NLRB is considering whether the Wildcats football players can be categorized under U.S. law as employees. They're trying to see if college athletes meet the definition of an employee. I would say that they do. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you say that they're employees of the university? Okay? Hell, football players work more than somebody in a 40-hour job. That job is more than 40 hours a week. So if they win this, brothers and sisters, you're going to see college sports re revolutionize because now they got to pay them. And they should be paid. And the only reason why they don't pay them is because 70% of them is black and they don't feel they have to. Whether they're going to win or not, I don't know because guess what David Stern said? Wait a minute. The Big Ten Conference said what? These are students. They are not employees. And students do not get paychecks.
Here's another important one, brothers and sisters. Remember I kept telling y'all, be careful what college you go to. Be careful what senior, what, what, uh, who you send your child to, what college you send your child to. There's a lawsuit. Some colleges are letting black kids go to, cool, go to the school even though they know that they can never be allowed to practice. Let me give you an example. You got a brother who got a felony on his record. He wants to be a, they had one of their jobs on him. Let me, let me go through this. It was the electronic monitor around the student's ankle that first gave Kelly serious doubts about the Harris School of Business. The young man with the monitor was studying to be a pharmacy technician. He was going to school to be a pharmacy technician. A for-profit chain of trade schools knew that the most widely recognized certifications for pharmacy technicians excludes anybody convicted of a felony or low-level drug offense. You cannot be a pharmacy tech. But the college didn't tell him that. The college told him he could be a pharmacy tech. Graduated him, gave him a degree, and then he found out after he graduated that he could never be one in his life. Why did they lie to him? Because they wanted the financial aid. Why did they lie to him? They wanted the grants. Why did they lie to him? They wanted the student loans. This is why you have to teach young people to investigate the profession you're going to study. Before you go to college, investigate to see whether you with your record will ever be allowed to do that. Too many of our kids are going to college and they are being played by the colleges who are lying to them. The student received federal aid and for the school to keep collecting it, he had to remain in a program and complete an internship. So Mr. Maya said he was told to find him an intern, even if that meant deceiving the employer. He was told to lie to the intern director. I saw students who never should have been there, students with whooping gaps and learning major psychiatric problems, I know what that is, and who were just not capable of doing the work. Harris's Linwood campus and then his Wilmington, Delaware campus from 2009 2011. The bosses were always like, stop asking why they're enrolled, just get them to graduation however you can. Keep the money coming into our school. Don't tell the black kids that you will never be allowed to work in that job. They even keep kids enrolled who should have been put out to school for low grades, but they keep them going so they get the money, and then it's time for you to graduate. What do they say? You can't graduate. Child say, why? Because you need at least a 3.0. You got a 2.0. We can't give you a degree. So why did you keep taking my money if I can't get a degree? All over America, this is happening. They call what y'all? For-profit colleges. For, this is what I tell students when they tell me about a college. If the college ain't been around at least 50 years, don't go to it. You don't go to no college that opened up last year. They ain't got no credibility enough. They're going to pack up tomorrow with your money. And they don't have to pay you back. Who are some of these colleges, brothers and sisters? University of Phoenix is one of them. Where my University of Phoenix people at? Come on! Who we got next? DeVry University. Where my DeVry people at? Scams! University of Corinthian Colleges. Anybody? Be careful. They're not saying the whole program is a scam. They said that they're likely to lie to you to get that money and not give you full credentials. Or not keep you out when they know that you don't qualify to work there. Next, Homeland Security with your license plates. Homeland Security abruptly reversed course Wednesday and dropped plans to ask a private company to give the government access to a nationwide database of license plate tracking information. This is how the cops know you ain't paid your ticket. This is how the cops know whether you ain't got no license. Secretary Jay Johnson directed that a contract proposal issued last week be canceled. The proposal said Immigration and Customs was planning to use license plate data in pursuit of criminal immigrants. You know they ain't looking for no damn immigrants. They're looking for black people. Law enforcement has been using license plate readers. Did y'all hear that? Did y'all hear that? They have a license plate reader in a cop car. They can read your plate and get all the information off the plate. Them scanners? They're not scanning for speed. They're scanning for personal data. Wait a minute. That's Omar Johnson. He's a Pennsylvania pan How Hell is he going to work? Oh, pull him over. All your information in there. Where you went to school, what hospital you graduated from, what type of chicken wings you eat. Yeah. <laughs> 
Check it out. Oh, homosexual priests. They found out that the archdiocese was lying to people about how many priests were guilty. They were hiding some of the names off the list not to prosecute people. Now let me ask y'all a question, brothers and sisters. You see how hard the gay movement is pushing, right? Can somebody ask you why the gay movement ain't doing anything about the homosexual priests molesting the kids? So you for human rights, why don't you do, do, do a, a, a rally to say that we might be LBGT, but we stand against adults molesting children, same-sex pedophilia. We are against same-sex pedophilia. Pedophilia in general, they're not doing anything about that growing <coughs> Catholic church. You notice that? They molesting all them kids, and the LBGT movement ain't said one word about it yet. I know. But if you say something about the homosexual, they'll get on you. But the homosexual won't get on the homosexual priests raping little boys. They got the association of Yeah, North American. Y'all know about that, right? North American Association of Man and Boy Love. Yeah. Go on the website tonight, brothers and sisters. Look it up. North American Association of Man and Boy Love. It's a group that wants to legalize pedophilia. Man, boy, sex. Go on the internet tonight. Look it up on your cell phone. North American Association of Man and Boy Love. They say a man having a sexual attraction to a boy ain't nothing wrong with that. We've been doing that since Greece and Rome. Alexander the Great did it. Napoleon did it. Caesar did it. What's wrong with it now? We've been doing this for 2,000 years. We white people. This is what we do. <laughs> Cultural genocide. That's why I always tell y'all people get your child a psychotherapist. What do you got to do? Put the psychotherapist's name, go to the website, National Association of Gay and Lesbian Psychotherapists. Put their name in to see if they're gay and lesbian. Because a lot of these therapists are gay and lesbian, they take their child in their room. They're not sexually molesting them, but they molested their minds. You're like, damn, I took my son to the therapist because my son was questioning his sexual identity. I wanted to make sure everything was okay. And every time I took him to the, to the session, he became more and more gay. <laughs> you said last time I took him to the session, him and the therapist came out with a pink robe on. Floating through the room. Floating through the damn room. Okay? Colorado said they're about to make more money selling marijuana than they thought. Then we heads, listen. They said, where's that? They said, how much money they said they was gonna make? Colorado said they was gonna make $70 million off of the marijuana sales. Guess what? They said they wanna make $98 million, almost $30 million more off of legal marijuana. They said we should have done it sooner. Now, what is Dr. Umar's problem with legal marijuana? I was on the radio in Bermuda, because they're about to legalize marijuana in Bermuda. Some people are trying, I'm against it. Now, some of my roster brothers called me up and said, Dr. Uba, what's wrong with the marijuana? We've been using this for spiritual purposes. I said, I got a problem with it. I am against the legalization of marijuana in oppressed communities because oppressed people are always looking for an escape from the oppression instead of doing something about it. All you're going to do is addict to marijuana.